Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's devotion. For today, I'm going to start off by singing All Are Welcome. Um, the song, I think, is just a great reminder um, that all are welcome in God's kingdom, um, in the church, and um, we should strive to make everybody feel welcome no matter um, where we are and no matter who they are and where they're from. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Last week I heard a story on Minnesota Public Radio that really caught my ear, and maybe you heard it too. It's the story of John Stain and an email he wrote. Uh, John Stain is a 27-year-old African-American who's married, has a toddler, and he works as a real estate assessor for the county uh, up in Duluth. And uh, being a, a black man in a community that is over 90% white has meant that again and again in the two and a half years that he's worked for the county, that he's been encountered by security guards, by custodians, by others, uh, questioning whether he belonged there, whether he worked there, what he was doing there, even though he was well-dressed, he had his badge on, it was during business hours and so forth. And in January, uh, it happened once again, and a security guard uh, came up to him in the hallway as he was talking to a colleague and asked him if he belonged there and what he was doing there. And and um, he had his badge on and, and he was just kind of put out by once again uh, having his presence questioned and uh, so he confronted uh, the security guard about it and just said, uh, you know, why are you asking me these things? You know, I work here. Here's my badge. I, 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 I'm here every day. And he went home and he was still upset. And his wife said, well, why don't you write an email to, to the other employees? So he thought about it that night and, and he did. He put together an email introducing himself to the other 2,000 employees of the county there in Duluth. And um, and he showed it to his supervisor um, before he sent it. And even though there's a policy against sending uh, emails to all the other employees, um, she approved it and said he should send it because she said it was positive and uh, helpful. 
And uh, the supervisor herself knew something of that kind of treatment because she is uh, Ojibwe. And so he sent it and waited for the response and um, heard back from over 200 other employees. The response was overwhelmingly positive. Some people came and introduced themselves. They said they were sorry for the kind of treatment that, uh, that he received. And um, he and some other um, employees of color are starting a working group to help diversity training and so forth. And so um, the story really does have um, a happy outcome. Um, but there was a comment in there in which John Stain said, you know, why do I have to be the one to make everybody else comfortable? Why do I have to do all the work? And, um, and so that got me to thinking about um, the work we need to do, those of us who are not African-American or uh, not uh, Latinx American, um, what can we do? And I thought again of the line from the prayer attributed to St. Francis that begins, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. And there is the line near the end uh, that says, uh, help us. Uh, to seek not so much um, to be understood as to understand. And I thought, you know, I can never fully understand what it's like to be an African-American man here in America. There's just no way I can do that. That's like asking me, you know, what is it like to be pregnant? I will never know from the inside. But even though I cannot fully understand, I can certainly understand more fully. And I think that's what's incumbent upon us, is to try and understand more fully what it's like uh, to be a person of color uh, here in America in the 21st century. And so that's one of the things that I've resolved for myself to try and do in these coming months, is to understand a little more fully what it's like to be African-American. And I think that um, it means listening to those voices uh, that really do know um, and not becoming defensive, not becoming explaining, um, not becoming rationalizing. You know, the, the goal here is not to be understood, um, but to understand. And I think that um, that will require some real imagination that we need to do our best to try and imagine what it's like uh, to be uh, African-American here in, in the U.S. And, and just to be silent and to listen and to ask questions and, and to try and imagine ourselves in a fuller way into that experience. If we do that, if we can do that, uh, then I really believe we will be uh, instruments of peace, um, instruments of justice, um, instruments of reconciliation uh, in a fuller way, in ways maybe we haven't been uh, in the past. And so I invite you to do the same, to, to listen. Um, you can find this story on the uh, Minnesota Public Radio website. It's really a very heartening and encouraging story. And it's we need more of this, much more of this, um, if we are to become uh, the nation we want us to be and the people our Lord intends us to be. Now I'm going to invite you again into uh, a time of prayer. We'll give you some time for silence, and then I'll lead us in prayer and in the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray.
Gracious God, we uh, give you thanks for um, your promise always to be with us, your promise to send your spirit upon us, to be in us and to work through us, um, to build your beloved community. Lord, we ask that you give us your grace so that we may be instruments of your peace, that we may uh, seek not so much to be understood as to understand, and especially to understand um, people of color in our nation um, who often have been unheard and um, misunderstood. We pray, Lord, for a fuller understanding of one another and a fuller understanding of your will, your will for us that we may live as your beloved children in the world. Lord, we pray for all those who are in need this day, um, all who suffer um, because of uh, discrimination and prejudice and hatred. We pray for all those who are suffering because of this global pandemic. We pray for your healing mercies upon us um, as a nation, as a world, among our cities, in our churches, in our communities. We pray that you, you do your loving, healing, and reconciling work. Lord, we also lift up to you all those whom we know and love, uh, who are in need of our prayers, um, whom we now name in our hearts before you. Lord, all these things and everything else that weighs on our minds and hearts, um, we lift up to you now in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now as you go forward, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, behind you to defend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace. And the blessing of the Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go now in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.